Wash your hands. Avoid sick people and touching your face. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. Brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. The views and opinions expressed by the host and DJs do not necessarily state or reflect those of WOTG Network and its management. Furthermore, the views and opinions of the guests and singers do not reflect the host, the show, the management, and the WOTG Network, WOTG Radio, and WOTG TV. So thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for some amazing programs. My life can heal my got so much to thank him for and I've got so much to thank him for. Amen. This is Joni. Hope that you're, you've had a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and you're listening to this. I just want to talk to you a few minutes about James 3, 1 through 12, the unruly tongue. Now, most of us don't have to, we really don't have to bother with that, do we? That is a joke. We all have trouble sometimes saying things we shouldn't say. We wish we wouldn't have said it or we wish we we would have said it at a time when we thought it was timely and why did I speak up? Or either why did I say that? Because I can't take it back. It's too far gone. It's, it's over with. It hurt someone or it made them feel better. Hopefully it didn't hurt someone. So we're talking about, James is talking about the unruly tongue. He's going through a lot of different things with, with the uh, persecuted church, the scattered church at this time, and he's gone through favor, uh, favoritism, don't favor people, uh, rich or poor, love everybody. He's gone through times of, when you go through times of testing, just trust the Lord and know that he will, he's working something out in you for your good and his glory to mature you and I to make us what he wants us to be. And we have to go through those troubled times. It's how we confront them, how we face them, which makes us into the person that God wants us to be. But today it's the unruly tongue. James has quite a bit to say about this. And it really is, I mean, for cross the, just cross the board for anybody uh, that we just need to learn, that we need to watch what we say. And there's many, many verses in Proverbs and also some in Psalms that talk about the unruly tongue. And one time I just wrote them out, just a whole bunch of them, and thought I need to read these every day to understand, you know, what I do and what I say and how it affects other people. And it affects ourselves as well. It affects our surroundings. It It's sets off a good attitude or it sets uh, off something that's unpleasant and it just does not bring a good environment when we talk with an uncontrolled tongue. But James says uh, in chapter 3, verse 1, he talks about the command. Well, it's actually a command that he gives about the tongue. He says that, you know, teachers are supposed to watch what they say. Let me read the first verse. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. In other words, in many, for in many things we offend all. If a man offend not in word, 
the same as a perfect man and able to bridle the whole tongue. Another version says, this is the King James Version. Another one says, don't be many teachers. Don't, it said many masters. Don't, don't teach if you cannot live out what you're saying. Now, I know we're not perfect, and I know we're not always going to say and do things that we should, but if you cannot control your tongue, that means you are not mature enough to teach others. Because what you're doing is you're bringing down only yourself, the Word of God, and you're making what you say look bad to others because they're thinking, well, if if she or he can't do it, then maybe I guess I can't either. So we can do a lot of damage with this tongue. And it, let me let me read a verse in Psalm thirty nine one. I said, the psalmist said, I will guard my ways that I may not sin. With my tongue, I will guard my ways. That means we have to be very careful. We have to watch it, that I may not sin with my tongue. You know, this is a very good advice, which comes from the psalmist David. In James one nineteen, it says that we need to be slow to speak. I believe he, he means that much of what we say, you know, we're tempted to say, has no constructive purpose to it. Slow to speak doesn't mean speak like this. It means watch what you say. Take account to yourself. Should I say this or should I not? Because, you know, a great deal of, of what we say is gossip. And some is uh, some mixture of tempted, some mixture of truth, half-truth, and outright untruth, which hurts, you know, it hurts so many people and it helps no one. Even it is, if it is the truth, we are not under obligation to tell the whole world. Just because you've been told something does not mean you have to tell it to someone else. And I'd be very careful to listen to something that somebody wants to tell you. I need to tell you this, they'll say, but don't tell anybody. There have been, and sometimes that, that doesn't merit some understanding, but not all the time. There have been many saints, I want to tell you, that have cried themselves to sleep at night by the devious plots of those who could not keep their tongue under control. Let's just let's just park right there for just a second and think about it. Have you used your tongue to hurt someone? Where you don't you have no idea maybe that they can't sleep at night, they're crying over what you said. Just because you want to make yourself look better, just because you cannot stand to keep things a secret if you hear something real juicy. You see, the tongue is a messenger, and it delivers the dictates of the heart. Because the Bible says, "A man, as a man thinketh, so is he." So, when the word tongue is used, think of your heart, because what's coming out is what's in your heart, really and truly. Bottom line, that is the truth. We reveal our heart by our daily conversation. We have to submit our heart to God in order to control the tongue. Let me say that again. Listen, think about that study. We have to submit our heart to God in order to control the tongue. We cannot do it by ourselves. We absolutely cannot. And when people tell you they're submitted to God, they've given everything to the Lord, he he is in control of their life, and they cannot control their tongue. What did I just say? Their heart is not right. You can tell a person's heart by the way they talk. Maybe not quite at first, but listen long enough and you can. The tongue, they say, is a muscle in your body that receives more exercise and less control than any other part of your body. You know, medically, they say it's only a two-ounce slab of muscle. Muscle membranes and nerves that enables us to chew and we taste, swallow food, and we articulate words. Do we articulate words? It can be a two-ounce beast on some occasions, James, James tells us. James says in Chapter 3 of his book that the tongue is small but is powerful. He likens the tongue to a bridle in the horse's mouth, a rudder that got, guides a ship, and the most extreme analogy is fire, a tiny spark, smaller than a fingernail, holds the power to destroy thousands of acres of forest. A young man was telling me several years ago 
that he and his parents lived in another town. And outside of back of their house was a big field. And the dad said, don't go around that field. Stay away from it. I'm sure it was dry and probably uh, they just needed to stay away. But they decided that they would go out to that field. And for some reason, they struck a match. I don't even remember how many acres he said that, that got burned because of that. You know, it's God says, watch your tongue. This dad said, don't light a match. It could start a fire. So a little small spark, just a spark. I mean, even in the forest or in the woods or in, in the mountains, lightning, if it strikes in certain places, it can start a fire, just a, just a lightning strike. It's very, very dangerous. And it's amazing to me that James uses this analogy to talk about the tongue. Who lets us know it's really, really dangerous, and we really do need to watch what we say. In this book, he does tell us it's small and it's powerful. One has stated that by examining the tongue, listen to this, physicians find out the diseases of the body. I read that back some time ago, and I thought, wow. One has stated by examining the tongue, physicians can find out the diseases of the body, and philosophers the diseases of the mind and heart. What has your tongue revealed this week about you? Again, the psalmist said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my salvation. That needs to be our daily prayer, folks. That needs to be our daily prayer. Father, we just we just ask you to help us. Let the words of, of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. You know, in the Old Testament and in the New, but especially the Lord says to meditate. And if we meditate on the things of God, by our way, our heart's pure. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to the word of God. And if we put the word of God in our heart and God reminds us what we should say and not say, then we can be acceptable to God, my rock and my redeemer. That needs to be, I will repeat, our daily prayer. A Christian, I looked up some things about the spirit-controlled tongue uh, or the God-controlled tongue. As Christians, we should have these verses. And I'm serious. I told you I wrote some of these down years ago and put them, on, put them up somewhere where you can see them every day. These are some verses about the tongue. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is a good report, if there is any excellence and if there are anything and if anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. Let your mind dwell on something that's true. If if an untruth comes to you, start thinking about something that is true. If your mind's trying to dwell on things that are not honorable, start thinking about honorable things and the right things and the pure and the lovely. The good repute or the good report. If there's any excellence and anything worthy of praise, Paul says, let your mind dwell on these things. Dwell on these things. Romans twelve twelve. I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, and which is good and acceptable and perfect. It just hit me to remind all of us that if we stand before people, if we if we preach, if we teach, whatever we do, if we uh, are a mentor to someone, please keep your heart intact with God and make sure that what you say is coming from your heart and not from ill uh, confusion and disrespect for others. Words can be life and death, the Bible says. 
to the body. So daily this week, daily this week, take a quiet time break. Meditate on God's word. Proverbs has a lot of great verses on the control tone. Here's Proverbs 10, 11. The mouth of the righteous. The mouth of the righteous. And we're only righteous through the Lord Jesus Christ. We have no righteousness but through him. That's why we can't do this by ourselves, folks. We have to have the Lord to control our tongue. It is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Violence. Proverbs 10, 9. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. In the multitude of words. If you just talk all the time and you don't let anyone else talk and you just talk and and before you know it, you're going to be saying things you should not say. You will not be articulating your words for sure. That is for sure. So in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. Now, this is the scripture. In a lot of words, and you're speaking a lot, sin is not lacking. But he who restrains his lips is wise. Proverbs twelve eighteen. There is one who speaks like the piercing of the sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. You know, you can actually, with your tongue, what you say, make somebody be sick. You really can do that. We can do it. Proverbs thirteen two through three. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. You know, people like that, that's all they do is all they talk about is violence, violence, feed on violence, this, this and that, the violence that's in the world, the violence. And I know there's there's bad things all around us, but my goodness, encourage people to come to know the Lord as their Savior, to walk with him and know that God will provide and take care of us. Proverbs fifteen twenty three, a man has joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season. How good is it? How good is it? The uh, writer Proverbs said. Proverbs sixteen twenty five. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. The Bible says good news puts health on your bones. It really does. Proverbs eighteen twenty one. This one we pro- we probably all should know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That is strong. Death and life. And those who love it will eat its fruit. You know, I saw this thought some time ago. It says your chances of it blowing it are directly proportional to the amount of time you spend with your mouth open. Be careful. You could be caught in your own M-O-U-T-H mouth trap. You know, folks, we're building up or tearing down in everything we do. Are you on the construction gang or on the wrecking crew? Which one are you on? How do you use your words? How can you articulate your words to know that God is pleased with you? So, you know, we have to use God's wisdom to be able to do what he tells us to do. We just have to, and we have to speak his words, not ours. But that is a heart that is completely under control of the Spirit of God. And when we say and do things, and we will from time to time, we definitely will, but we, when we say and do things that we shouldn't, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that's in us, that will react and make us feel ashamed of what we've done, we need to immediately apologize. Or go to a place by ourselves and say, God, I'm just sorry I did that. Now, when I go, let me go back to James for a few minutes because I was talking about the tongue and how unruly it is and all those kind of things and how we're not supposed to teach because we will, let me say this again, there will be more judgment for a teacher who teaches and lives out a, a life of spitting out poison in their tongue. Jesus tells us to control it. It says in verse 2, I would suggest that we would read this often. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man or a mature man and able to bridle the whole body. 
I mean, you know what? I used to ride horses a lot when I was young. And I would get on that horse, we'd saddle it, and I saddled the horse, and I would ride it. And I had to pull the bridle if I wanted to go to the right or the left or whatever I had to do. I controlled that horse by that bridle that was in his tongue. That's a that's a analogy of what we do. I mean, this tongue can be bridled, but it is our choice to do it. He says, behold, he mentions another example. Behold, also the ships, which though they may be so great, and they are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small ham, whithersoever the governor listed. You know, I've never really driven a ship before or been on a ship to, to drive it or to turn the ham, or I, I just never have done that. But I've seen them do it, and I know that on the water it can be very dangerous if you do do not control that ham when you're when – you're, uh, King James says ham, but, but the will, because it will go wherever you tell it to. Now, verse six, 5, even so, he says, the tongue is a little member, and it boasts us great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth, and he mentions that. So, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, and that also is a strong word. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Mm. These, again, are some pretty... Strong words that James is talking about. Apparently, he had gotten word of those that are becoming had become very judgmental, gossiping, and we've seen in his book that there has had been some real issues that he's trying to solve here. And he says in verse seven, for every kind of beast, and of birds and serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and has been tamed of mankind. Let this sink in too, but the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Wow, do you ever think of just having poison in your mouth? If we just spit out unruly stuff, say evil things. I mean, I have heard in in the past people that cannot talk without every three or four words, and we hear it on TV, and if if I come across something like that, I turn it immediately. They talk ugly. They spit out venom. Just venom is what they do, and it's a deadly poison. So, therefore, it says, James says, we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. So James is saying, how can you do that? Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. You've been around somebody who just praises the Lord wherever you are and everything, and the next minute you hear him cursing and talking about somebody. That's what he's saying here. Does a fountain send forth at the same time same place, sweet water and bitter? He's asking a question. Can these things happen? Are you doing what you're doing with your, t- with your tongue? I'm giving some examples of things. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine fig, so can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. He can't do it. Who is a wise man and endears with knowledge, endues with knowledge among you, let him show out of a good conversation, his works with meekness of wisdom. That's verse 13. Let him show it by what he says. Wow. I mean, we hear people say, you know, by your deeds, you can show what you are. But by your tongue, you really can prove who you are. Where is your heart today? Where is my heart? What have we said today? What have we done that has hurt someone? Have we complained? Have we lied today? Oh, just a little white lie. It was just nothing. You know, nobody will ever really know. What about gossiping? You just could not 
stand to be quiet. You had to tell someone about that person, their past life or what they're going through now, or talking abrasively, talking crudely, talking flippantly, talking too much, bragging, talking condescendingly, and criticizing. You know, some people can get away with this kind of stuff. The bragging, talking crudely, gossiping, all these things. But examine the tongue. Because, you know, physicians can find out the disease of the body. The philosophers, the disease of the mind and the heart. It's amazing to me how many of us as Christians can gossip so much and talk about others. Being in a group together, a prayer group, and somebody wants to give a prayer request, and they give about a a 10-minute, five-minute even, observation of this person. And by the time you go to pray, you think, whoa, they really do need it. And our mind starts wandering as well. If we know someone that needs prayer, just pray. Go to your prayer closet. You can tell people to pray. Having having a prayer request and praying over people, I think that's great. I really think that's great that we do that. But I think we need to be very, very careful, very careful that we do not gossip and talk about people. It's a fine line. Friends, it's a fine line. And James says that we are not to do it. He just talks about power that is in the tongue. What about James actually illustrates to me in 9 and 10 the, the tongue of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's their tendency. It is a tendency to do that. So Proverbs ten eleven says, though, that our tongue can be a fountain of life. Twelve eighteen it says it can bring healing. Twenty fifteen says it's more precious than gold or silver. And I don't think I read this one a minute ago. Look it up. Proverbs eleven eleven. Cities are exalted by the tongue. You know, a person can stand up and spit out so much stuff that it will just make you think, this is this will never happen. This is impossible. How can this ever happen with all that this person is saying? Can with God. God can do it. God can control our tongue. He can make our hearts pure before him. But it takes discipline on our part. It takes spending time with God and saying, God, I need you to control my tongue. I need my heart to be changed. And I want to ask you right now, whoever you are, if you have a problem in this area, if you just talk too much, and if you don't even realize you do, I'm asking God to show us, to reveal to us what we do that we should do, that we actually deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves. We just cannot be quiet. God, help me. Help me, Lord. I've heard my daughters tell me sometimes that I talk a lot. And I say, no, I really don't, because we can deceive ourselves. We really can. It's okay to talk if you're you're talking things that will encourage. But I'll tell you what, sometimes it's just better to be quiet and say nothing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for James 3, 1 through 13. We thank you, God, that we're reminded what the tongue can really do. Wow, it can be really strong and it can hurt so many people. But help us, Father, to be concerned with other people, to lift them up, to encourage them, to let them know what the Word of God says, and to help them to find their goal and their purpose by praying with them, by encouraging them. And don't put them down. Help us not to do that. Help us not in sly ways come around and, and like, like a snake would and just slither around and say, in your, in your mind, I've just got to say this. And then you hurt them. Love them. Pray for them. Pray for yourself as well. God loves you today. God loves me. God cares about us. He cares about that tongue because I tell you what, we can actually 
bring salvation by using the tongue for the glory of the Lord. I love you today, and I ask you to please, please pray to God to help you, as well as I'm I'm going to even more myself, to pray to God that we will say and do the right things. Love you today. God bless. You've been listening to Spending Time with Joni. JV Ministry is also a 501C and is made possible through support from her listeners. She wants to say thank you to everyone who's helped her get it going. We hope you will join us again next time for another edition of Spending Time with Joni. You can find her website at JoniBuchanan.org. She is also on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you and God bless.